Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. For all you GNS3 fans out there, you probably wonder, is there a way to lower my CPU usage, you know, something other than using the idle PC value? And actually there is, there is something called idle max, and that's something that I don't think a lot of people use out there right now. So I'm going to show you the differences between running a heinous topology like what you see here without idle max, and then we'll turn on idle max and I'll show you the differences, the drop in CPU usage. So we're going to do this on Windows 7 on a Core i7 laptop. This is the Asus Republic of Gamers G75W laptop, 16 gigs of RAM, double SSDs. This is the new GNS386, just came out about 45 minutes ago, hot off the press. And just to show you the laptop right there, here's the new egg link. Uh, I actually bought this at Fry's for about 1500 bucks. Looks like the, here they're selling it for refurbished. Now the .NET file that I'm going to be using, just going to pull it on screen right now, standard .NET file, my idle PC value is set correctly for this computer. All 15 routers are running 192 megs of RAM. Image file is the 3725-12415T code. Alright, enough of that. So let's fire this up. Now if I start this all in one shot, my laptop will crash. And I know that because I've replicated this a couple times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start half of the routers in one shot. Then I'm going to terminal into them, putty into them, hit enter, and then I'm going to fire up the next several routers, or the next half. So there are my first eight. Then we're going to go up to here to super putty, speed test, R1, R2, R3. And all the routers are coming up. And incidentally, this particular topology, all of the IP addresses are set 10, 1 something. So 10, 1, 13 dot X in between 1 and 3. All IP addresses are set. And OSPF is running on all links. So we've got a, quite, a, quite a lot going on here. So our first eight routers are past their press enter prompt. Let's take a look at Task Manager here. And we're hovering somewhere in between 20% uh, or so. So interfaces are coming up. OSPF is uh, forming. And now it's calmed down to about uh, 10 to 15%. So let's fire up the other routers. And I hope to never do this test again because it was kind of a pain in the ass to uh, set all these up. But anything for science, right? Okay, we have all 15 running. Let me just terminal into all of those puppies. Okay, everyone is past the press enter screen. I'm going to wait for the adjacencies to form up. There's the task manager so you could kind of get a feel of what's going on. So you can see here on a Core i7 2.4 gigahertz beefy, beefy computer, it's around 20%. And I'm just going to wait for the adjacencies on R9 and R15, all the way to R15 to form up. For the first eight routers, everything's okay there. There's our adjacencies. You can see the temporary spike up to about 35%. And now we're kind of running in the, I would say, 25% to 30%. Now here's what's cool. I'm going to send a ping to the broadcast address on all routers. This is super putty. If you click on commands right here, you'll see that, oops, let me just minimize this and close out my new egg screen. All right. Also, I've minimized, uh, I've killed everything in my taskbar so there's no extra crap running. So right here, we're kind of about 20%, 20 spikes up to 30. So in Super Putty, you can click on this commands box here and whatever command you type in here will be replicated to all your tabs. So I'm going to ping the broadcast address to everywhere and watch what happens. My computer is going to go nuts. And all the way up to 100%. Oh, it's, it's not happy. So all 15 routers are going. And you, you see how sluggish it is. It's, it's horrible. Now, after the pings are finished, everything drops down to 20%. Same thing happens if I show IP interface brief. That's not as bad. It goes up to about 40-something percent. Now, if I show IP route, OSPF pipe IO, 
you see I can get that sucker up to 100%. All right, so that is with no idle max, just a regular plain vanilla .NET. Let's see what happens if we play around with idle max. Okay, I've copied my .NET file into another directory. I've basically just made another copy of the whole directory. Opened up the .NET file. Here you can see my idle PC value. The idle max, if you want to play around with it, goes under the idle PC value, and it's called idle max equals. And the lower the number, the more CPU that it's going to try to save. Uh, now generally what a lot of people do is they'll do idle max 100, that's pretty extreme, uh, but for some people it works out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try idle max 200, and what you have to do is you have to put these for each hypervisor. So the hypervisor you're going to look for it, it's going to have an IP address, colon, and then port number, usually 7200, 7201, and so on. So here I'm just going to copy this idle max value, find my next hypervisor, find my next idle PC, and paste that in there. Pretty easy modification. And that looks like it's it, so I'm going to save that. And all I have to do is double click on the .NET file, you're going to see that GNS3 opens up, and we're going to fire up the routers like normal. Hypervisors are starting up. Oh, we're going to click play. Oh, that was bad. I should not have clicked play. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Usually this would crash my computer, but uh, maybe the idle PC value will help. And I'm wondering if Camtasia is going to die, but uh, maybe not. No, hey. Let's buddy into these guys. Actually, I can right click. Connect all. Sure. Pretty neat feature inside of Super Buddy. You could just right click on any folder and it'll open all the devices inside. Oh, will you look at that? Okay, so that's an idle PC value or idle max value of 200. And we're up and running. Looks like OSPF is okay. Let's take a look at Task Manager. Oh, it's not too bad. It's around 10%, uh, spiking up to 30. Wow, it even goes down to 4 or 5%. Definitely a lot lower. Let's check out the responsiveness. Let's do that uh, ping to the broadcast address again. Some more space there. All right, so we saw in the previous session where we did not have an idle max value, when I did the ping to the broadcast, it went up to 100%. That was the same with the show IP route OSPF. Let's see what happens here. Oh, we definitely get 100%. Not that you would ever do ping to the broadcast address on every single router at the same time, but just for kicks, right? Show IP route OSPF. And that will probably hit 100% as well, but it definitely does seem a little bit more responsive. So you can see here that at a standstill, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 5 to 10%. And before, we were kind of hitting 20, 25%. So it's definitely helped on the, on the CPU usage. Let's do one more test, and here we're going to do idle max 100. So lower is better. 100 is probably the lowest you really want to go. Okay, we're back. I've changed the idle max value to 100. I've already started everything up and terminaled into them just to make this video a lot quicker. And OSPF is already up. And let's pull in Task Manager. Task Manager, you can see right here, I am below 10%, below 5% at some points. So it's definitely a lot better in terms of CPU usage. Let's see about responsiveness. So, cough T, router BGP, so doesn't look too bad. All right, let's see what happens if we ping that broadcast address. It'll probably still hit 100%, but let's see. Yep, definitely still hits 100%. You can see the pings are coming back kind of jerky, so 
we can see some hit on responsiveness, but once again, you're not going to ping a broadcast address from every single router at the same time. So there it is, idle max value. Try out idle max 200, and if that works, then you could try out idle max 100. It'll definitely lower your CPU usage. So if you're having trouble running those big topologies, give it a shot. Once again, my name's Humphrey Chung with Router Gods. Thanks for watching.